sometimes when people think about boarding schools, they think about dormitories and cold showers and lack of privacy and, and bullying and, un and unpleasantness. But uh, you know, the reality at a school like Harrow is that, that Tom Brown's school days, you know, is dead, dead years ago. I think coming to Harrow is a powerful experience because the boys are hit very much by the history and the traditions of the place. It's fascinating to start with these chaps appearing as sort of little squeakers aged 13 and five years later there they are, um, 18 and a half and hopefully ready for the world. They do seem to come across as very confident Herobians. There's a self-confidence that's there that I think we build on by trying to get them to be independent and to think for themselves, but also to be aware of the history that they're becoming part of. We're also at the same time trying to produce boys that uh, are aware of the world outside and, and are perhaps aware that they have a privileged position within it. Founded four centuries ago as a charity school for the poor, Harrow has become one of Britain's most expensive schools. £16,800 each year for a boy's education. No fewer than seven prime ministers have been taught here. While safeguarding its age-old traditions, the school has to survive in the modern marketplace of the 21st century. As the new school year approaches, 13-year-old James Robson is getting ready to start his new life at Harrow. Hey, I'm going to jump in, you better get out of the way. James has never boarded before. In the next few days, he will leave his family behind to live with 60 other boys in a boarding house at Harrow on the Hill. James is joining one of only three public schools which remain exclusively all boys and all boarding. But competition for boys is growing, and Harrow's market share is now in the hands of new headmaster Barnaby Lennon. This is coming on, but won't be ready for about two weeks. He spent one and a half million pounds on a modernization scheme, but with just days to go before 800 boys descend on the school, the work is behind schedule. always like this at the beginning of every academic year because all the substantial building work has to be done in the eight weeks of the summer holiday. The projects always take nine or ten weeks and uh, so you know, there's always a bit of muddling through in the first week. Before the autumn term begins, the Robsons visit the school tailors. James will have a uniform befitting nearly 400 years of tradition. Right, first we'll start with the Sunday wear which consists of a white shirt, striped trousers, a black waistcoat, and tailcoat. So what I'd like you to do, James, is try on the shirt and the trousers, and when you come back out, we'll try on the other items of the uniform. Okay. Okay, change rooms just around the, the corner there. Most boys have an account here. For, his, um, for their day-to-day -day needs, so James can just pop in. You look very grown up. How does it feel? <laughs> okay, James, I've got the black tie for you to try on. Okay, the black tie you wear every day of the week, as well as Sunday. And do you know why you wear the black tie? No, because of uh, Queen Victoria. When Queen Victoria died in 1901, the governors at the school decided that there'll be 100 years of mourning. So officially you're meant to wear the tie until the year 2001. I think every mother wants whatever school they send their child to, to give them an all-round social graces, um, an academic environment, but more than anything, that he will be really happy there, learn how to live with other people and respect other people. Another tradition, I think it was uh, George the Third, or George the Fifth, I can't remember offhand, but um, he was quite a large, large man and he can actually physically do the bottom button up. So again, out of tradition, um, the boys leave the bottom button undone. 
Matron prepares the rooms for the 160 new boys for whom Harrow will be home for the next five years. It's very good for new boys to share a room because then they get to know one other boy pretty well at an early stage. But one has to strike a balance between privacy on the one hand and wanting to encourage friendships amongst these boys, most of whom of course are coming from very different schools and in these early days our experience has been that this works extremely well. The aim is to get every room in Harrow like this one. As good as, as, good as a three star hotel, put it that way. Yep, this the Harrow yep. right here. Right. Sit like that. Have to do an alteration on the sleeve. Definitely. A bit long there. Smart enough to get married in. Eight white shirts. Two pullovers. Leaving home will be hard, but because you'll be surrounded by everyone, it'll be good fun. The older boys at Harrow are about to enter their final A-level year. Before term starts, 20 select senior boys have been sent on a course designed to get them ready for their new role as school prefects, known as monitors. The idea is to try to get them to, um, in a sense, it's a bonding exercise because we hope that over the year they will cooperate with each other and work together effectively as, you know, as, a, as a team. It doesn't matter which order you go, you just stand up and grab it, but you should, yeah, off, push off your thigh. The role of monitors at Harrow is basically to keep control, I suppose, of the boys. People step out of line, you've got to put them back in. This is the Harrow hat. Goes on your head like that. There's a strap that goes to the back of the head. Let's just pull it down. Mm. Okay, the hat was actually designed for posture. So when you're standing up straight with your shoulders back, it should tilt slightly forward. Okay? Mm. There's a thin coat of varnish already on the hat, but what most boys do is within the first week or so, they'll actually buy some yacht varnish from the bookshop and just um, put it over the hat. Have a look. Very, very smart indeed, and grown up. Yeah. Different. <laughs> I think they bring the monitors over here to form a better team so we can work better together and then we can trust each other to do our jobs at the school as well. It's yeah, up to you, but don't do it if you don't feel comfortable. We, we, no, no, we've got up. you standing up with Alex holding on to you. Get Cecil up first. When do the boys get to wear the top hat? If uh, James becomes a monitor when he's in the sixth form, We'll be allowed to wear the top hat on Sundays. Would you like to try it on? You need to be a bit older to wear that. Slightly large. Yeah. Yeah, the point is just to gain a bit more confidence in ourselves um, and each other. Trust ourselves as a group. Um, yeah, feel that you can rely on each other. <laughs> These days, parents don't send their children to boarding schools because you know, they want to get rid of them. They send them to boarding schools for positive reasons, because those who can get the money together want their children to go for reasons which have got nothing to do with status or prestige and everything to do with education, learning and life opportunities. That's what the parents are paying for. That's what they expect. That's what I expect to provide. Very, very expensive. Um, but I'm sure it's worth every penny. It comes to £1,756.70, and 70 pence, please. On top of the school uniform, there are the fees and the extras. Over five years, James's education will leave the Robsons little change from £100,000. <laughs> Summer vacation has ended and the new academic year is about to begin for Harrow School. One of the first to arrive back is this year's head boy, Patrick Massey. As head boy, I get the same privileges as the other monitors. There are various people who say that I can you know, get a goat and keep it somewhere if I want to get married or grow a beard or have a car. And keep an elephant, I think, is one of them. Uh, but I don't think anyone... Um, have a pushed headmaster by doing any of this. 
While they're at Harrow, the 800 boys will live in one of 11 boarding houses. Moving into Drury's house this term is new assistant housemaster Keith Metcalf. This is his first teaching post since leaving college. It's quite uh, nerve-wracking. You feel like you're coming back to school. You have a whole new lot of people you have to meet, teachers and, and youngsters. I'm looking forward to it. It's just these first few days when you're, you're moving in and you just, you just feel like you're, you're a lost little schoolboy again. Most of the um, masters yet uh, Harry live on the hill so that they're involved fully in school life so that they can be attached to a boarding house. Um, obviously living in Drury's I'm going to be very busy. And, uh, but I, I look forward to that. I think, it, I think it's a good chance to be involved in the school and all the, that the boys are doing. I think that's a, a good extra challenge. For some of these boys it's the first time they've left home, uh, left their parents. And I think that, that can be quite a worrying time because how am I going to cope with that mum and dad to look after me? How's little Johnny going to cope without mum and dad look, looking after him? I think it's I think it's quite hard for them. It's the first day of the new school year. As parents deposit their sons back at Harrow, the local high street quickly becomes jammed with traffic as the boys move in. I think parents have concerns about sending their children away and some of them are almost indirect concerns as to what are other people going to say if I send my son away am I going to be seen as cruel or, or uncaring it's a tough decision for some parents but I, I would say to them come and visit the boarding schools come and see how the boys get on see how happy they are when they're here see what sort of people are turned out at the end and say is that the sort of person you'd like your son or daughter to develop into David Ellery is housemaster of Drury's. He's on hand to greet James Robson as he arrives with his parents. I know that while he's there, that is his family. And I think it's sort of mum realising that he's going to have another family. And whilst I'm really happy about that, because I know it's a family that's going to be better for him in the next five years, David Ellery is far more qualified to deal with puberty and teenage problems than I am. He's had hundreds of boys pass through and he's, he's, he will be better to deal with it than myself. But he's still mine, uh, my son, my first son. And I do slightly feel um, I'm going to have to share him a bit. And I am feeling a little bit not sure about that side. As each new boy arrives, he has assigned two older boys to help him find his way over the first crucial days. James, how are you doing? Yeah, Alexis, how are you doing? Yeah. So this is your room then, you're sharing with John, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the plan is we um, just sort your room out and then um, we've got about 45 minutes to half an hour and we'll go back downstairs to Mr. Ellie and have some drinks. So, um, While James and his new roommate John Lee settle in, Keith Metcalf and the other new masters have been summoned to the headmaster's office. Good, sit anywhere you like. What are you going to do with spelling mistakes in geography essays? It depends on, on the pupil. If it's just an occasional mistake, yeah. uh, you might uh, make a note of it in their, in their work and give them the correct spelling. Yeah. If it's a do, you, do you really think that would achieve anything? I'm not convinced that a Herovian faced with a simple correction in the margin, will necessarily learn the work. I have a sort of suspicion that, that, that you, the teacher, are doing all the work there, and you're not really requiring enough from them. For those who've not boarded before, and, and half of my, my new take have not boarded before, there's also the, the excitement but concern about how will they cope being away from home, what will it be like, and in the first few days that they're here, we keep them very, very busy, so there's not too much time to sit around being homesick. Hi, all right, how are we getting on? Have you tried everything on? Does it, does it fit? Tomorrow, when you're going to come and put all your posters up, you can put drawing pins on there and there. 
How are you doing with everything? Thank you. All right. Now, are you both tidy? Is this going to be? A t are you generally tidy? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Mostly. <laughs> or is this going to be one of matron's horror rooms? Oh, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be. No. All right. Okay. You can tell a lot by people about how tidy they keep their rooms or not. Being a teacher is quite a lonely job. You know, most people work in an office with lots of other people. You're going to be on your own uh, most of the time. But never mind. Uh, you'll find that you'll have plenty of support from within your department. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. <coughs> Cheerio. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I could just interrupt for a moment. We're starting out on a great adventure, a five-year adventure, which the boys will enjoy hugely and that I hope the parents will enjoy equally. Now, I would appeal to parents not to be upset or disappointed if you discover that your son has settled in and is very happy and is enjoying himself. This can happen. He may well still miss you. He may miss the dog more than he misses you, but he will miss you, but he may well be happy. If he's unhappy, there are lots of people that he can talk to. But if you think your son is not settling well, then please phone me or Matron or Keith Metcalf at the earliest opportunity and we can double check. I hope that the boys will have a fantastically successful and enjoyable five years in Drury. I have absolutely no doubt they will. We shall demand very great things of them. Right, Daniel, sort out laptop for you. Right. And um, we'll get something sent down. But we'll probably come on Sunday okay. um, and see how things go and watch the matches and things. All right? Yeah, Lydia. Apparently, apparently you're in house matches every Saturday. Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. So we'll try and get back down on Sunday. Yeah. Um, you yeah. have to talk by the end of the week if you can. Okay. And. Um, Get this key cleaned. Remember what child? Right. Okay. Right, come on. Okay. Okay. It's her. Uh, yeah. I love a lot. Bye bye, darling. Bye. Alright, see you later, fella. Alright. Send me an email as soon as you get onto the internet, yeah? When I get the laptop. Laptop, yeah. I'll try and sort that out during the next couple of days. Right. Okay. 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 Alright, see you, mate. Bye. Gelston, Lee, Mello, Morris, Coygan, Rich, Robson, Shaw, Stevens, Walker, Wilson. Yeah, boys, uh, welcome back. I hope you had a great summer, and uh, let's make this year a good one, okay? And work hard, play hard. Okay. One of Britain's most famous and most expensive schools opens its gates to 800 boys for the first day of the new school year. It's so traditional and it's very, very old and it's, it's very big and very scary to start off with. In an ever-changing world, the school holds on to values and traditions established over 400 years. The school obviously has a number of traditions and customs which really serve to give the school its particular character or flavour. They taken together would be one of those things which makes the school distinctive. I think the stereotypical view of Harrow is basically like people running around like sticks and top hats and going like very posh accents and going, oh Harrow, jolly good to see you, oh John, yeah, that's very nice. And it's really not like that at all. Please sit down. Well, I hope everyone's had a very enjoyable summer holiday, and we especially 
uh, welcome this morning the 180 new pupils to the school. Whether your interests or talents lie in art or music or drama or sport or one of the hundred or so other activities on offer, it's part of my expectation that you will try out a variety of these activities in the coming weeks and in so doing discover, I hope, abilities and interests that you may never even have known you had. Although Harrow is full, boarding has declined elsewhere by one-third in the last 15 years. Now fewer than 1% of the nation's children board. Many of Harrow's new boys are leaving their families for the first time. On his very first day, each boy must audition for a place in the school choir. I'm Mr Walker, I'm the director of music here, and this is our occasion to meet every new boy in the school. The idea is just to sort of see where your voice has got to, see what instrument you play, make sure everything's right, and send you away happy. It certainly is the case that some boys try not to do it well, but we do our homework in advance and we know who we're looking for. So we're, we're up, up to some of the tricks. Even if they're not good enough for the choir, there's no escape. It's a Harrow tradition that every new boy must sing a solo in front of the rest of his boarding house. It'll be an interesting solo when you sing Manifar in the house, won't it? I'll look forward to being there. Okay, thank you very much. His, his voice is breaking and he can't really control it at the moment. So whatever happens in the future at the moment, he couldn't sing in a choir at all. Like the new boys, 25-year-old Keith Metcalf has just started at Harrow. One of his first jobs is to take his tutor group to the classroom to give them their timetables. Keith is also an assistant housemaster at Drury's, one of the 11 boarding houses. So this is Churchill Schools, where all the geography departments are downstairs. Obviously you can see there's uh, a... The, the house system at Harrow is a sort of root of, of most things. The house is important to the boy. It's where he, obviously where he lives and where he, where he does uh, much of his work. And it's where, of course, he will find um, most of his, or a great number of his friends, certainly when he's first here. Uh, will be based uh, on his house, and it is, a, a, in a sense, a sort of school community within within the larger school. Now, what we're going to be doing today is going through the role, my role, as your tutor, and uh, your role as my tutee. And we're going to go through the timetable. You're just going to get your own separate timetable because you're not all in the same forms. We'll make sure you're happy with what forms you're in. Thursday is Latin, History and Divinity. Friday, Latin, and chemistry. And Saturday, English, technology. I think that our role goes way beyond the, the actual form room because uh, we are a, a, you know, a boarding community. We're here 24 hours of the day during term time, weekends as well, and so one's in constant sort of touch with, with the boys. And um, in that sort of way, it's like a, you know, an enormous great family watching the new boys in their first 24 hours. We build very much on their house identity because they've come away from home, they're insecure, and they want to be, find security in a small group. So to come to a school like Harrow with almost 800, that's big and vast. So the house and the year group within the house is a smaller unit they can adapt to. Yeah, Michael, were you in the first or the second? Rugby. Rugby. Well, I was in the first two years ago. During term time, you are the most influential adult in their lives, and, and that is an awesome responsibility. So you are surrogate parent, and you've therefore got to build up a strong relationship with each boy as an individual. There seem to be some, you know, some very talented boys, and it's very encouraging. There's probably not a boy there who isn't a, a sportsman or not interested in playing, which also helps. And that, that, that will also help them settle in because they'll all want to play sport together as a group and that's quite important in the early days. I mean, they look as if we'll win quite a lot of house competitions 
this year and in future years, I think, on the basis of watching them for 15 minutes, which is why they're in Drury's, of course. Being from a nice, cosy little family and coming to a place where I'm one of 63, it was quite amazing shock. I don't want to say no one really cares because they all, he cares about everyone. But I mean, quite impersonal. It's quite heavy chat, so you'll need to turn it on its side. Okay, then who knows where Custos' office is? David Ellery introduces the new boys to another long standing Harrow tradition. Some names in gold because when you become head of house, you're. Since the early 19th century, each house has recorded the name of every boy on its boards. I've got the board there. Okay. You can tell a great deal about a boy by the state of his room, what his interests are by what's on, on the walls, how tidy his room is, it tells a lot about the character. But we accept that it's their home and, and we want them to make them feel as comfortable as possible. Oh, how's it going? Um, it's good. First rule, where that adult walks in the room? Stand up to find a mo. Okay, we're not planning on putting all these women on the walls, are we? No, uh, the walls are solid. Right. What were the rules? I thought the safe, the, it's blue tax not allowed on. No, and, and certainly not drawing prints. Isn't it? Even worse than blue tax. Alright. So what you really need to do is to get a drape and to be able to stick those on and then hang them up. But I think we're going to have to decide how many women and in what state of clothing. And like right. So you're fairly patriotic. And is this all you've got at the moment? In uh, terms the, of posters? Yeah. I left one back at home. This one? What, and what was it? it What's the poster? Just, uh, There's another, another woman, yeah. was it? Yeah. Does, does Mum allow you to have all these up at home? Well, she she brought one up. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh, right. I went in the kitchen about 10 o'clock. Right. Got two. Okay, well, I think put one or two more up. You can always blue tack one or two onto there. Yeah. So you can lie in bed and look at them. So you've got something nice to look at when you wake up in the morning. Now, John, I have some rather good news for you. You're in the oh. Plain Song Choir. Oh, you no. Have Freddie. What do you mean, oh, no? <laughs> it's extremely good news. So you've got your first rehearsal tomorrow morning. Sir. All right? Yes, sir. Good. You don't look delighted by the news. <laughs> no, Ray. Really. Because I think your voice is quite good. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll yeah. see you later on, then. Later. Yeah. See you later. Bye. Bye. Okay. No, <laughs> I'll be watching out. Um... In my first school, I was like the worst singer in the school. Can't believe I got in. I think Mr. Ellery was just trying to make conversation. Because I've seen some worse ones downstairs. I growl and moan and groan and tell boys off more than punishing. But I do believe that, that in a disciplinary sense, as a housemaster, you need firm guidelines for the boys to deal with, cope with, which gives them a security as they grow up, particularly through adolescence. But you've got to know when to turn a blind eye and what is important and what isn't important. Harrow School grounds are spread over 400 acres. New boys are given two weeks grace to find their way around. After that, they'll be disciplined if they're late for lessons. Hey, excuse me. Um, do you know where the English clock five is? Yeah, okay, the quickest way is around that corner, yep. down the road until you get to the turning off to the left, it's just in front of Elfield, you know, right? And then across, across that road, in yep. front of Elfield, turn left again, and it's just up. And there's a sign saying cops and DT schools. Is it quite okay. near where the jogs Yeah, it's just opposite the jogs. Okay? Okay, thanks a lot. The new boys with the best voices have been selected for the treble section of the choir and must now attend their first lunchtime rehearsal. Okay, that's far enough. Now, I see some people starting to look a bit uncomfortable. Not everyone will be able to get that high, don't worry if you can't. Very well done. There are one or two gentlemen at the back here who are standing behind other people, which is not a situation that I'm particularly happy with. And I'd like you standing somewhere where you're not standing behind somebody else. Because you strike me as the sort of person that's going to grin at the back and not do what he's supposed to. 
Responsible for the carving of names is Ralph Thompson, known to the school as Custos. Robson, and you're happy with that? That's great. I'm so pleased that you're. Not many people see their own name called. No, they don't. This uh, is there for history, so you're now in a row here, so that'll be there, and nobody can change that. Yep. And then you can look back in history and say, there I am, Kai. Are you happy with that? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Pretty good. Pretty Sorry, good. Sorry, very good. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Brilliant. I'm so happy that you're happy. Yeah. If they try and uh, tuck it in, you know? But there you are, you can say, you've seen your name card. Now, normally things will be a little more relaxed than this, but this afternoon we have to learn a short piece of music ready for the Sunday morning service. Don't talk, please, while I'm talking. And it sounds like this. Three times in my little Lots of families have, have, have their names been carved, and some for generations. Yeah, but like my, my family have always come here. There was, there was me and my two brothers, and before them was my dad and his brothers, and there was my granddad and my great granddad. And you were the first. The first to step down. Lovely. Maybe your great 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 grandchild can say anything too. Yeah, you never know, do you? No. And there you are. If you looked at the house boards, you will see the same names repeating themselves. And so there are um, some families where in a space of, uh, what, about 150 years, there have been over 60 members of the same family. So you can't get a you know, greater sense of continuity than that. puts quite a lot of pressure on me because all my family have been here and if I don't really do much good here then I might let my family down. In 1615, Harrow School consisted of just one room. It's still preserved today and known as the fourth form room. This is your carbon starkey and somewhere in this room is your great great grandfather. Oh. We should try and find them, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. See what you can find. And what other ones you can find. Yeah. Because in here is Lord Byron, Sheridan, Charlotte, uh, Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, Churchill's in there, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Seven Prime Ministers of England in here. Uh, is it the boys who carve it below? Yes, the boys used to carve all their names below with the help of the local carpenter. It started in 1620, actually, the first boy carved his name with a pen knife. And then it went from there. So let's have a look and see if we can find your great great grandfather. Okay. Right. He was a ship owner, and there he is as a bone. And I saw, and I said, oh God, yeah. I didn't even know he existed. Ah, oh, well there you are. And actually, he's up there. Good. One or two people shouting, um, one or two people singing in the wrong octave, but basically a very good sound, um, much better than I'd thought. Um, obviously not all of them want to be here. Some clearly really don't want to be here, and uh, if they continue really not wanting to be here for much longer, then I might let them uh, stop out, but I might make them stay, depending on how nasty I'm feeling. This is the famous bird. Uh -oh. And what you had to do, you had to bend over here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You bend over here, put your hand here, and you were burst at 9 o'clock in the morning. Hello, uh, calling you boys. Come in, sit down. Every day, Drury's new boys meet with housemaster David Ellery. Inter-house rivalry is strong, and it will soon be the first opportunity for the Drury's new boys to win honours for their house. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So we've lost half of you already. Ah, James. So who's got lost today? Oh, yeah. 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 Ye
it's a big challenge for a 13 year old boy to arrive in a boarding school and, and cope with all the the routine and the things that he has to understand and it's a huge tribute to them that, that they nearly all manage very very well nevertheless there's, there are a few who find it really pretty difficult and it's that our challenge I think is to then to train them to get it better without it becoming too big an issue um, and getting in the way of their happiness or their, you know, their, their academic success. Everything's fine except for the sock bag because the sock bag by the time they've all finished putting in smells like very ripe gorgonzola. 10 to 8 and housemaster Simon Berry's first chance to meet the boys. This daily ritual in each house ensures that all are present and correct. Harmsworth, Lampett, Mason, Morgan, Roberts, McGowan, Melvin, Slater, West, Bacon, Bismarck. With strong military traditions, most boys join the school cadet corps. Between roll call and breakfast is sometimes the only opportunity to practice their drill. By the front. Quick, Bart. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Left, right, left, right, left. Licking the new recruits into shape is the task of former Welsh guardsman John Davis. Left, right, left, right, left. It might look as if it's um, it's a punishment getting up um, before breakfast to do to do drill, but a lot of them enjoy it, and uh, it's better than lying in bed and messing about, isn't it? Harrow's matrons are influential figures who monitor the boys' welfare. They play a motherly role in helping newcomers feel at home amid the rules and regulations of living together. A lot of boys find the discipline and the rules over the top. And yes, they do come and talk to me, and we do tend to sit down and talk about it, discuss it, and hopefully try and take them through it but there has to be rules because otherwise you would just have a very unruly house for the new boys known as shells the first weeks are critical as well as learning a new set of rules they must try to make friends early on if they are to settle and establish themselves in boarding school life when you first arrive at the school you have a very short time in which to get your status. Which group you gravitate towards in the first term really is important. And I gravitate towards nice, quiet uh, people. Whereas I should have, if I wanted to be incredibly popular, I should have gravitated towards the kind of incredibly cool jet set. OK, read through quickly. Can we concentrate, please? It goes like this. Watson? You're meant to be watching and reading. Do we get? Multicellular organisms, including all plants and animals, can usually be thought of as organized on four increasingly complex levels, a sort of hierarchy of organization. Everyone appreciates what a hierarchy is. The school is basically a hierarchy of power. Um, <clears throat> there, are, there are people like you, who at the moment are right down at the bottom, so you have very little power at the moment, but by the time you leave the school, you'll have quite a lot more. Basically, as you get towards the top of that hierarchy, there is more and more power in the hands of the individuals concerned. Generations of fathers and sons have followed each other to Harrow. Peter Stevens' family have been coming here for 150 years, but for Peter himself it's a first taste of boarding school life. 17-year-old Ben Irwin Clark has been at boarding school for more than half his life. I've been boarding since I was eight. And obviously it, it comes as quite a sort of system when you first start. Um, but I don't hold it against my parents. I think whenever you go away from home, it's tough. But we need to remember that, that adolescence is a passage from being a dependent child to being an independent adult. And going away from home perhaps hastens that process. While the boys are having lessons, Matron Maureen Bone is carrying out her daily inspection of their rooms. Now, a little tidy. Hasn't 
had time to make his bed yet. There are some rooms that you walk into, you look as, it, it looks like a bomb site. So matron leaves little notices. And they're soon tidy up, believe you me. Cardboard boxes are not allowed in rooms. They attract the dust. I shall leave him a little note. It isn't a hotel, and they don't come expecting that it's going to be a hotel. They've had pre-warning. Some of the smells in the house are pretty bad. Right. Bums and bosoms. No full frontals. I don't allow those. It's all right. No, I don't like that one. Even in their rooms, the boys' privacy is limited. There are no locks on the door to deter Matron's attention. They can have a little note from Matron. They've got to realise that I am here to help them and that I'm not a dragon. There's quite a conception, particularly among people who've read books about boarding schools and matrons, that Matron's going to be a dragon. You know, it is a difficult I mean, I don't have to deal with their laundry, but uh, you could argue the problems I have to deal with are, are even worse because you can't put them in the washing machine, um, which at least she can. She, she can tidy their room for them. She can pick up their laundry, uh, and she can force pills down their throats more or less. But, you know, teenage kids are, are difficult, which is, of course, one reason that parents send them to us, I think. In Drury's house, Matron is having one of her motherly chats with her new boys. It's important that you do regularly shower, always after games, at least once a day. Um, wash your hair at least a couple of times a week. Change your clothes regularly. It's very important to clean your teeth after breakfast and before you go to bed. If you've got a problem, I am very approachable and anything really personal, you come in to my flat, the door gets closed and what we talk about is just between you and I, whether it's homesickness or anything. If you just fancy a chat, you can come in and say, can I put the kettle on and make me a cup of tea. All right? Harrow maintains that boarding education is about learning how to use your time. Leisure activities are considered almost as important as lessons. All the boys have been saying that you've got to do as much as you can at the school and just do as many of the activities as you possibly can. Because then, like, if you find something and you'll be good at it, I mean, there's one thing that everyone's good at. And if you, you're, you're going to find it, and this is what the school is for. I think what we have to do is to make sure that a boy who isn't yet fully settled doesn't allow that to become a preoccupation. That we make sure that he involves himself with lots of activities, he involves himself with other people in the year group, he opens lines of communication, he gets to know people, allows people to get to know him. And remains part of the team. For some it takes a while. A favourite playground activity is called BUM, B-U-M. It's scary and painful, but even the victims enjoy the forfeits involved in this traditional Harrovian ball game. <laughs> to keep up with the latest Harrow fashion, once a week the mobile barber shop comes to the hill. This haircut with the crest is the most commonest. I mean, quite a lot, quite a lot of people at the school has have the the high crest, don't they, Carl? Yeah. With it, <laughs> with it, sort of flying awful. in the air. I mean, if you walk down the street and look at the Rodians, they've all got their hair. Um, so I, 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 I change. I like my hair. Love it. Do you want to spray them? Yeah. Okay, chat. 549, 11 minutes, let's go. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> this afternoon is the Interhouse Cross Country Competition. All the boys are expected to take part and will run three and a half miles across the fields, unless they're lucky enough to have a sick note from Matron. So how is it today? Um, it's less than feeling like better. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Have you sit yeah. down, Jim? How long 
already have it. Um, it came in at my front and just after the break. I was like quite hot. Going outside for a bit. So, yeah. Have you got the temperature, do you think? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah, I might just check it, but I don't think I have. It's ideal cross country weather. Cold, wet, muddy. Straight down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, Jeff. Come back. It's such a time. I guess if you've still got that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. It's all confidence. That's that's what a boy needs. So you can then build on his talents, however small. Um, and you can, of course, arrange a bit for some people to come in and, and build those talents and tell him how good he is at something. And even if it's slightly artificial, just to give a base that that we can then build on. B12. Let me say again, to come out. They like to boys like to compete, they have a competitive instinct uh, and it's surprising how well even the not so great runners can do if they feel they're part of a team. It's knackering, it's, especially on days like this, it's just complete bag. We just want to be inside watching TV. It's cold, it's long, it's slippery, they're like long distance. Harrow's definitely made me more resilient to things. You, you kind of, you develop a shell, a bit of a kind of a harder skin, a bit of a thicker skin really. Um, uh, if I'd been at home then I might well have not been able to put up with some of the things that it's necessary to put up with at school. And I'm not talking about the way the school treats you, but the way other, you know, the other people in the school might treat you, whatever, because not everyone here is as sensitive and loving and lovely as my family is. When I first came, I had to learn how to take a joke. It was one of my first things. You know, if anybody called me a name or said something to me, I used to lash out. So uh, learning how to take a joke was a big thing, and uh, I, I think I did, I did it quite well because you know, now if anybody calls me a name, I'll just laugh at them. Is Trinity there? After supper, any boys with disciplinary problems must see their housemaster with their daily report. Communication reference lesson must speak. Tuesday talks too much. So biology you don't talk enough and maths you talk too much. I don't think I talk too much, he just he thinks every time he looks around I'm talking. But I don't really talk that much. So. Yeah. So can I have that permission to go down town tomorrow? Please. For what? Well, my mum's put a check in the post, sir. Has she? Yes, sir. Well, she's very nice, yeah. sir. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, sir. Okay, well, you'll need to get a chit okay, if it comes, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Good. Thanks, sir. Could you see if Chinadu's around and kick him in my direction with his daily report? Yes, sir. Yeah. David Ellery has suddenly been called away. There's been an accident on the high street with one of the new boys and a cyclist. Injuries are slight, but the cyclist needs a hospital checkup. I think what's happened here tonight just demonstrates how all the house masters one moment can be dealing with something very minor. I was dealing with uh, the boys' mathematics not being very good, and then the phone call comes and you're then involved in something at the other end and it can be serious, it can be not too serious as in this case, but I think it just demonstrates how when you're in a boarding school you are involved in every aspect of the boys' lives 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you have to be prepared to deal with anything from, from the small to the major. The boys do prep or homework in their rooms between 7.30 and 9 in the evening. Afterwards they can relax before the new boys go to bed at quarter to 10 and the seniors by 11 o'clock. I think people are mistaken if they think that because boys have come away to Harrow, they've lost the family. They're not emotionally cut off. They're, the idea they have no support, no substitute family is actually a, a major misconception. And often boys will make friends at boarding school who become lifelong friends. 
we know very well that very often we sometimes share our, our deepest thoughts, our closest thoughts, not with our parents, but with our friends. I think that it boosts your character and it makes you a better person, I, I think. But some people were born to board, some people shouldn't board. So I hope that nev no one ever gets the wrong way around. I like the way that the system changes you in most cases. Some people come out of public school a bit. <laughs> not. But, um, but yeah, I like what, it, what school's done for me and I'd like the same to happen to any son of mine. But being a boys school, you get you know you get boys will be boys, you, you know it's yeah, uh, it's and boys with their toys. I suppose everybody's just on for a really good laugh, mucking around, um, playing games. Down, you know we can just go absolutely wild you know, to a certain extent, and you don't get to do that out of out, out of a boarding school. One of the last to bed is head of house, Charlie, whose job it is to make sure all the boys are tucked up. Since we live together, you know, we get to work and play together, which is fantastic. Harrow is a school for boys, and only boys. Up, two, three, down, two, three. A very high proportion of the parents who come through my door here looking for a place at Harrow are interested in single-sex education for their teenage sons. In those critical years, they think there's some sense in a single-sex uh, school. Sir. The boys practicing their cadet corps drill attend one of only three all-boys boarding schools in the country. Oh. Too fast. Everybody's too fast. <laughs> Listen to the timing, okay? I would rather, much rather go to an all-boys school because uh, if girls were here, I think that would seriously affect my work. The younger ones would say, no way, no, it sucks, we definitely must have girls, yeah, that'd be so cool, imagine there'd be girls' houses we could break into, it'd be so cool, but um, I think anyone who kind of is looking at it sensibly would actually acknowledge that it works as it is. The school places a strong emphasis on sport. Games are played five days a week after lessons. This afternoon, the school's first 15 are preparing for their next rugby game. Like it, like it, like it, yeah, right here, cool. Most boys in, in my year, I don't think, have a, um, a regular girlfriend, because it is, it is quite difficult um, sort of to see them. I think that most parents believe that it's a very good balance, that they have a, a full social life, but for a, a number of days in the year, they're here to work and to learn and not actually to socialise with, with girls. Harrow is prepared to teach its boys an artistic appreciation of the female form. Even if it is at a distance. At weekends, girlfriends are permitted to visit the school to watch the boys' sporting prowess. But maintaining a relationship is difficult. There is little time to be had before the boys have to be back in their boarding houses. It's one of those kind of in jokes about public school or single sex public schools. You know, the, the 800 testosterone fueled boys all trapped in one small, relatively small place, you know, for a long time. Uh, it's difficult <laughs> for, for, for every member of the school and every, everyone feels it. Harrow has made changes. There are now five women amongst the 90 full-time staff who teach the boys. I think they are in a very rarefied sort of position. I mean, they're not living in a natural community. I mean, it's a whole colony of men living together. And I think in a way it's an unnatural environment. 
On Wednesday afternoons, boys parade in the Combined Cadet Force, also known as the Harrow Rifle Corps. Get on! Hey! For the new recruits, this is their first experience of drill. Established in 1859, the corps still a central feature of school life. The boys are instructed in traditional military skills such as drill, weaponry and leadership. It doesn't suit everyone obviously, it's, it's, um, it's not everybody's cup of tea. But in some cases, and I speak from experience, it's the making of some people. Barry, the bun should be the same height all the way round. The cut badge should be a, an inch above the eye. Right, the left. Boys can join the Corps in their second year. Although it's not compulsory, pressure to enlist is strong. This term, the majority of the year joined up. For those less inclined to join the Corps, there are alternative Wednesday afternoon activities. Community service is run by modern languages teacher Loretta Mosley. I mean, I think pretty much it is for the boys who are physically or not spiritually capable of going out and um, drilling around the yard or going off on night exercises. And there are some boys who are just not, you know, designed to do that sort of thing. And they would be much better off in the community going out helping people. And, you know, they're sort of a quieter, gentler type. By many, community service has been, has been seen as a soft option within the school. But actually, once the boys come out and do it, I mean, they really do prove themselves and, and they are doing something valuable for themselves and I think for the school. Today, Oscar and JJ are visiting 84-year-old Lily Waif, who lives on her own. Hello, come in. They're exceptionally nice boys. They're Hoover, uh, climb down the stairs, wash up. They have a great help. They do anything that I ask them. Nothing's too much trouble. Another alternative to the core is conservation, where the boys can help with the upkeep of Harrow School Estate and learn about the environment. Now, this is the area where we've got about 20 oaks. Can you just hang on there, Tick, okay? This area, we've got about 20 oaks. These are the oaks that we want dug up and removed and put into grove wood. Um, just to remind you, this, this whole area here is a butterfly and moth site. Some people might, might say that boys only do conservation because they don't want to do the core. Um, that may be true to some, for some boys. But what I've been increasingly encouraged by, actually, is the growing awareness that you know, there is something to be learnt from all this. Look at that taproot. Oh, we've bashed it a bit there, but that's enormous. Well, the people who do the course seem to not care at all about the conservation. They're much more into sort of wearing their army uniform and um, suffering and looking hard. And conservation is actually worthwhile doing, and core, I really don't think it is. It's only play, it's not even the real army. It's 5.56 millimetre in calibre. That means it fires a 5.56 millimetre bullet. Now it's exactly the same as the weapon. New core recruits are given basic weaponry training. It's very accurate, all right, although it fires single shot. Well, Senior boys practice their shooting and hone their military skills. So, Marine rack, Marine section ready for inspection. Fair on. In open order, march! Eyes foot! Those joining the Corps don't necessarily expect to enjoy it. You know, you always get the old ones telling everybody, don't join, don't, don't join the Marines or don't join the Army. Because, you know, all you're going to do is just run, run, do push-ups and sit-ups, which is, you know, which does happen occasionally time to time. But not joining is thought of as taking the comfortable option. They'd rather be uh, munching Mars bars uh, in a nice hot room with a cup of coffee in the telly talking to, uh, talking to somebody, you know, an, old, an old person for, for an hour and keeping them company rather than being in the cold. There you go. Thank you very much. How many biscuits do you like, Mrs. Wade? 
I chose uh, community service because I didn't see much point of marching around all the, all the time and um, I just prefer it. I like to help out and help people who need help. It's really important to have them here because my family have grown up and moved on and away and the boys are the only young people that I see. Do your drill correctly and let's not laughing and joking and smiling and talking and swearing. Quick! March! Left! Right! 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 Down in the woods, the conservationists are clearing the ground for their tree planting. Before we do CCF, um, they kind of think uh, we're all sort of like wusses up here, that we don't actually do any work. As you can obviously see it's completely wrong, and um, I, I think they're all just a bit silly. I mean, why on earth would you want to do that? Uh, when I ask my friends why they do it, they say that it's fun and enforces discipline, but I don't think you need CCF to give you discipline, and um, this basically, um, because I like plants and things and nature, I decided to do conservation. As these boys plant oaks for the benefit of future Harrovians, their opposite numbers in the core face their toughest weekend of the term away from the school. What is physical geography? You've been doing physical geography ever since you arrived here at Harrow. But do you really know what physical geography is? 25-year-old teacher Keith Metcalf is settling into his first term at school. But he has yet to undergo an intimidating rite of passage before becoming a fully-fledged Harrow master. The boys of the Harrow Rifle Corps are also going through a very different rite of passage. They're on manoeuvres at the Army Training Zone in Sandhurst. It's as near as they'll get to battle conditions. Just over three weeks now since the term started, since I taught my first lesson. And I'm beginning to feel like I'm, I'm part of it here. I feel like I know what's going on, I'm up to speed. I feel like I'm uh, beginning to belong. Many Harrow rituals are now second nature to Keith. In a tradition called capping, masters and boys acknowledge each other when passing in the street. Oh, and then put it back together again. Many of the new recruits are experiencing the art of survival for the first time. They'll be expected to build their own shelters for the night. All you want you to do is make sure you tie it up, all right, lift it up in the center, and that will prevent all right, any water holding on it, otherwise you'll get wet. This is, is of course, for certainly the, the younger ones, and it's a bit of an adventure, really. Um, you will find that there are some of the boys here who probably never spent some um, a night out in the open um, in their lives. Yeah, yeah it's, it's quite, quite comfortable now, actually. It, it might, might be a bit cold at night. Yeah, that's true. But as long as it doesn't rain, it'll be fine. Well, as long as it rains in the right direction, and that way. <laughs> I'll get all wet. What do you mean, you mean I mean, the, the situation that we, we put a lot of these boys in will be totally alien to them in, in, in mm. some respects. And I think that's um, that in itself is a, is a very positive experience for them. No one else is actually going to look after them, they've got to look after themselves. There's no housemaster, there's a molly coddling them or matron to pick up the pieces. When they're out here for 24 hours and uh, they do actually you know, look after themselves. Oh no! Hey, 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 get in there! Back at Harrow, Keith Metcalf is grappling with an unfamiliar task. Like all Harrow newcomers, he has to perform a solo song in front of the 60 boys in his house. But first, he must learn the words. We all have to do the same, the first four lines of the, the Men of Harlech. And I've just been given the book, uh, so I've got a week to go, and I've got it to learn. And, uh, well, I think I should be able to do it in the time, learn it at least. But I, I don't know the tune. You actually rub it in. Get rub in. All right, spit. Good lad. Aww. Rub it in. All right, and we get it underneath the nose, in the nostrils, and everything like that. In the field, all matrons' lessons about hygiene are abandoned as boys camouflage themselves to fool the enemy and each other. Give a shot! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 you want eyelids? That's enough, that's enough. You look like a fool. 
With his solo approaching, Keith has enlisted some support. His girlfriend Claire has come to help him rehearse. Give me the lower one then. Oh. Oh, I can't. <laughs> go again from the start. Yeah, the okay, one. I have to go. Okay. Go a bit faster, I can't even keep it. Oh, can I hear the boat as something fun? You got grass on that. While they're in the field, cadets eat <laughs> army rations. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think I'm basically cold now, but. Um. You can just about live on them. The thing I like most about being at this camp is being away from, like, the irritating things that go on at school and, like, TV, radio, being completely submerged in the countryside and not having any clue about what's going on in the world. Um. And not worrying about that. It's I keep wanting to say feel. No, it helps if you stood up. Oh, sorry. Okay, more air. Okay. Yeah. I'll try not to look at the way. Okay. It could be quite useful in case ever a war does break out then then which I hope hopefully it won't, but uh then uh you've got some boys of, of from the genera from all our generation to actually know how to uh handle a weapon. So if ever Britain did get invaded then it could kick ass. The bullets may be blanks, but the lessons are well learned. Many boys from the Harrow Rifle Corps become commanding officers. Britain's former Chief of Defence Staff, General Sir Charles Guthrie, started his army training in the Harrow Corps, and 19 old Harrovians have been awarded the Victoria Cross. I mean, this kind of situation really tests your, your own qualities, your own skills, and your leadership qualities most of all. I mean, I'm sure I've gained confidence in a leadership <laughs> hugely because of being in charge of these guys. Back at school, the big night has arrived for Keith Metcalf. Before the evening is over, Keith will have to sing his solo version of the first verse of Men of Harley. But he'll have to wait his turn. At camp, the boys prepare for their night out in the open. Masters and senior cadets patrol the area. Very well camouflaged. This is the first chance that they've got of discovering the other side of core that isn't based on the parade ground. Um, there's a couple who are getting a bit cocky because they thought they knew it all um, because they'd done drill and that was it. But night exercise suddenly opens up all these new opportunities and shows them all, a, another whole side of the core about which most of them know absolutely nothing. The personal discipline, put it all inside, tucked underneath, out of the way. If it pours the rain tonight, all this kit's going to get soaked. Back at Drury's house, the first solo performances come from the new boys. When you're out here, you know, there's the very real possibility of people getting lost. You know, some of these guys don't have a clue about how to have a basher properly, how to cook. So we really are responsible for making sure that they survive the exercise. That's light shout, head sound, no talking now. You'll be woken up at five o'clock. Get some sleep. <laughs> Get your boots on. Drop your ponchos. 
The core recruits are made to strike camp in the pouring rain. Make sure you've got all your kit. And uh, last but not least, Mr. Metcalf. <laughs> Hark, I hear the forward dancing, barbers steer our frowsy front. Hell, the dancing glitter through. <laughs> I feel good to have done it. It's something that you have to do, and it is hard, and it is embarrassing, and you do get incredibly nervous. Um, but once you've done it, you feel like you're in. Follow on, follow on, follow on, follow on, follow on. Still, I'm hearing again and again.